Do you know when was Gandhi ji born? Yes. Gandhi ji was born on 2nd October 1669. The date of birth of Gandhi ji was 2nd October 1869. Always remember this date. Was Gandhi ji's wife's name? What was Gandhi ji's wife's name? She was previously known as Kastur Kapadia and after marriage her name was Kasturba Gandhi ji's wife's name was Kasturba Where did Gandhi ji completed his law Gandhi ji studied law in London Where did Gandhi ji studied law Gandhi ji studied law in London Gandhi ji had four sons He had no daughter The names of his sons was Hari Lal Mani Lal Ram Das and Dev Das The name of his four sons was Hari Lal Manilal Ramdas and Devdas You have to find out when did Gandhi ji died and who killed Mahatma Gandhi Savitri bai phule Today we see that girls go to the school colleges and excel in every walk of life along with men but this was not always so in the past women and the down trodden sections of the society did not have the right to education they were not allowed to work in any important position their life was miserable this was a great social injustice social reformers fought against this injustice and discrimination foremost among them were mahatma jyotirao phule and his wife savitri bai phule Bal Gangadhar Tilak was born in 1856 at that time the british ruled over india people did not like this british rule they agitated against the british government lokmanya tilak inspired a national spirit among the people for that purpose he organized public celebrations of ganesh utsav and shiva Shiv Shiv Jayanti in his papers Kesri and Maharatha he boldly criticized the government the british government arrested tilak and put him in prison but lokmanya tilak continued his struggle for swaraj even after he was released from the prison he spent all his life in the service of the nation lokmanya tilak swaraj is my birth right and i will have it the person who asserted this was lokmanya bal gangadhar tilak mahatma phule started the first school for girls in pune in 1848 in the face of great social opposition at a time when the women were not allowed to read and write savitri bai became the first women to teach in a girls school to stop her people created many obstacles in her path they even threw dirt and stones at her but she did not waver she did not give up her 
noble cause. Her nobility and courage will always guide men and women alike in the course of their life and career. While our history books focus on the contributions of a privileged few, let nobody forget Savitri Bai Jyotiba Phule, who dedicated her life to championing the cause of the oppressed. It was Savitri Bai's crusade against Brahminical patriarchy that set the ball rolling for intersectional feminism and education for all in our country. Born in 1831 in Naigao, Maharashtra and belonging to the Mali community, Savitri Bai was married by age 9 to Jyotiba Phule, who was 13. At a time when lower caste men and all women weren't allowed to study, Savitri Bai Phule, along with her husband, spearheaded a movement that led to the emancipation of many from Brahminism, patriarchy and feudalism. Savitri Bai and Jyotiba Phule defied social norms to educate themselves, setting up the first school for women in India. Despite being the very first female teacher and headmistress of India, Savitri Bai is an icon we don't often learn about. The couple set up several schools in Maharashtra for women and Dalits. The curriculum of these schools focused on science, social sciences and mathematics. A complete departure from school teaching back then which taught the Shastras and Vedas to Brahmins only. And guess what? The number of girls attending the schools run by the Fules far exceeded the number of boys. A pioneer of women's rights in India, Savitri Bai was also responsible for setting up a feminist organization, the Mahila Seva Mandal, where women across all class, caste, religion were welcome. She was very vocal about her support for widow remarriage and actively campaigned against child marriage. She even sparked a barber strike in Mumbai and Pune as an act of protest against the practice of shaving women's heads. She set up a home for the prevention of infanticide, welcoming expecting widows into her own house so that they could safely deliver their babies. The two also started the Satya Shodhak Samaj, an organization representing minorities and their interests at a time when they weren't allowed a voice or a platform. Satya Shodhak intercaste marriages challenged the existing status quo and Savitri Bai Phule stood undaunted for the rights of those persecuted by the caste system. After Jyotipa's death, Savitri Bai went on to head the organization. A crusader for education and empowerment through and through, Savitri Bai wrote feisty prose and poetry, inspiring the oppressed to rise up against the ruling classes. She published Kavya Phule in 1854 and Bhavan Kashi Subodh Ratnakar in 1892. Savitri Bai set up a clinic for the treatment for those affected by bubonic plague and in 1897, herself succumbed to plague while tending to a patient. But Savitri Bai's life story would remain incomplete without the mention of Fatima Sheikh, another phenomenal woman who led the crusade against Brahminical patriarchy alongside the Fule couple. Fatima's struggle against the status quo was double-fold, owing to her identity as a Muslim woman. She joined ranks with the Fule couple in their quest to making education accessible to all, supporting them every step of the way and went on to become the first female Muslim teacher in India. The work done by the powerhouse duo of Savitri Bai Fule and Fatima Sheikh was one of the earliest examples of intersectional feminism in our country and they continue to be an inspiration in fighting against oppression even in contemporary times.